Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So today we are going to be doing MLM Horror Stories. It is pretty much nighttime, so I'm not gonna have any coffee. I've got my water. What are you drinking today? But you can grab your coffee, grab your tea, your popcorn, your snack, and let's get into today's video. So I do wanna mention that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, so thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So the first horror story, oh, it's a long one. I love it. So it says, literally surrounded, by MLM. Hi Deanna, love your videos. My current ADHD hyper focus is anti MLM videos and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. So I wanted to send you some of my MLM experiences. They aren't super juicy, but boy do I have some stories to tell. And they range from Mary Kay to Herbalife to Primerica to Pharmacy. When I was in college in the early 2000s, I'm a geriatric millennial. I was recruited to be a Mary Kay consultant by a friend. My friend even made it to director and earned the pink Cadillac. At that time, Mary Kay had dress code requirements for all consultants. We all had to wear skirts, pantyhose, and closed-toed heels. Ew, no, I hate pantyhose. <laughs> This was required for weekly meetings, career conference, parties, etc. Perfect clothing choices for an early 20s college student, right? I never tried recruiting as that was not in my wheelhouse and to be honest, it kind of creeped me out. There was a lot of emphasis put on warm chatter or going up to randos in the grocery store, department store, etc. and commenting on something about their outfit or whatever and then pitching the business. Yeah, that's a big old no from me, dog. I sold a few things to my friends and family who were already using Mary Kay, but was honestly more interested in the discounts on products. I eventually just stopped altogether and there were no bad feelings from my friend who recruited me. One thing I will say for Mary Kay is that they're very adamant that their current consultants do not sell slash recruit from their personal social media accounts. If they use social media, they need to create separate accounts for their business. And apparently their car program is structured a little bit differently as those that qualify for the car program do not purchase slash lease the car themselves and they get a bonus from Mary Kay. Mary Kay pays the loan slash lease director and provides insurance and if you no longer qualify for the car you aren't stuck with the payment you can't afford they just take the car back it's a little better than other car programs still a pyramid scheme in 2007 I was in the midst of planning my wedding for later in the year and one of my friends approached me and asked if I wanted to lose weight before the wedding mind you at the time I was 5'9 and weighed ooh, maybe 120 pounds I've been there I'm 5'8 and I used to weigh 115 so I definitely get that there was no weight to lose she tried to pitch Herbalife shakes to me to help me lose the last few pounds before getting married so that I would look my best in my wedding photos. Gross. I need to preface my next story a little. My husband and I got divorced, but I still remain close to this family. And in 2015, my father-in-law oh, passed away in a helicopter crash. The week after he passed away was a rough time for the family, but it ended with a celebration of his life surrounded by friends and family. It was a great end to a terrible week that was almost ruined by the insensitivity of a quote unquote friend. This friend works for Primerica. She once invited me out for coffee to catch up and then proceeded to try and pitch Primerica to me. No thanks. Anyway, the celebration for my father-in-law, she sent me a Facebook message. I had been getting a few throughout the evening from people offering condolences, but this was not that. Her message asked me if I knew any veterans that were looking for work, as Primerica was offering a startup special to veterans, and if I knew of any, would I please either give her the names or give her name to them? No mention of my father-in-law. Needless to say, I completely ignored her. Fast forward to last year before the global panorama, my mom, who joined Mary Kay to get a discount on products and hang out with her friends, asked if I would be okay with reinstating my consultant account so that one of her Mary Kay friends could count it as one of her recruits to qualify for something. I wouldn't have to sell or do anything. They just wanted my account to be active. I honestly didn't care because they were handling all of it, including the discounted starter fee. I just had to supply the previous consultant account, whatever. One day I had to go to my parents' house to drop something off in the middle of a work day and our Mary Kay friends are hanging out by the pool. On my way out, I jokingly said, all right, gotta go. Some of us have to work for a living and can't hang out by the pool all day. For reference, I'm an environmental sustainability consultant and I work from home. At One of them said something along the lines of, we could change that for you. I responded with a fake laugh and left, but under my breath, scoffed, at least I make actual money. Finally, this past year, a friend of mine texted me and asked me if I've ever heard of the company called Pharmacy. She was considering starting a quote-unquote business with them. 
I was confused because I thought she meant Pharmacy, the brand at Sephora that has amazing green clean cleansing balm. When I looked into it, I realized that this is a completely separate thing. She was looking into the MLM. I wrote her back and told her that it didn't look like a very good opportunity. I sent her the 2019 income disclosure statement from Pharmacy's website and let her know that based on average commissions, 99.29% of the beauty influencer entrepreneurs didn't even earn a livable wage. She thanked me for the info, but joined anyways. When she reached out to me to see if I wanted to join her Facebook group to learn about products, I thanked her for thinking of me and wished her success, politely declined as I don't support MLMs. She hasn't sent me any other pharmacy related things, but I'm super thankful. I hope she doesn't lose much money trying to be successful in a pyramid scheme. I'm sorry this message is so long. This isn't even half of my experience with MLM. I think I've blocked more Jamberry, Color Street, and other MLM parties on Facebook than there are stars in the sky. I actually agree, Facebook is like the place for these things, like for the parties, and I still get invited to them. Even like from family members, I'm like, no, do you not see my videos? <laughs> like I'm not. I'm not joining your group. Her father-in-law passing for things like helicopter crashes, plane crashes, just things like that are, I feel so hard to get through like the grieving process because it's something that happens like so suddenly and not something that you can kind of plan for. And then instead of someone reaching out to you, seeing if you're okay, because your father-in-law passed away, you get recruited or try to get recruited into an MLM. I just don't get where they think that's like such a smart time to reach out. And on top of that, the pharmacy thing. So I'm so happy that you actually sent your friend like the pharmacy income disclosure statement because that is what I'm talking about. I love when, you know, people can send it and hopefully it helps. Clearly with that person, it didn't help them out and she still join. I feel like once you get to a certain level, like for example, if you're about to join an MLM and you've already went through like the information session, you've gotten the info they want to give you because they're not going to give you all the info, aka the income disclosure statement, all of that. They're just going to give you the fake lifestyle they want to sell. But when it comes to that, I feel like sometimes the person gets into the mindset already of the hope, right? They think, oh my gosh, I could have that. And they kind of have their mindset. And sometimes, you know, when you reach out to them as a friend and say like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. They just may not listen because they already have hope in their mind that this could get them wherever they want to go, or this could provide for them what they wanted to provide. Sometimes it works though. I've had someone actually reach out to me and I responded to her today. today Thursday when I'm filming this, but I responded to her today and she said like, girl, I was about to join Beachbody and thank the Lord I didn't. I came across one of your videos. And that's someone that like, thankfully they were willing to listen and hear out my video to, you know, see some facts, see my experience and then kind of decide after getting both sides. Not everybody does that. Not everybody is really gonna listen to both sides once they have their hopes into something. If that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but thank you so much for sending that to me. I hope that I explained that well. I just, I feel like that happens a lot where people get their hopes up. So the next story says generational MLMer. Oh no, oh no, this does not sound like it's gonna be a good thing. It goes, hi Deanna, my name is Olivia and you can use my name. I'm thinking about sending my story for a while and just now biting the bullet. I gotta be honest, if I know myself, this is going to be long, lol, but hopefully it's worth it. I appreciate what you do so much. You're part of the reason I and my mother have come into the light. So my MLM history goes way back. I am what I jokingly call a generational MLMer. My mom, for as long as I can remember, has been a part of some MLMs. First, it was Longa Burger Baskets, then Party Light Candles, Cookie Lee Jewelry, Plexus, a million others, but most recently Beachbody, Rodan and Fields, and Zaya Activewear. That's a lot. We always had MLM products too, Tupperware and Scentsy and pretty much everything under the sun. I started using Plexus when I was only 14 and even gave into It Works wraps a time or two. My mom and I both tend to really give into the ideas that MLMs push on the pain points that they often tend to touch on. So you could say that it came honest to me. So I'll get to my story. I'll start by saying that I've always been very insecure about my body and my weight. I struggled with disordered eating and felt a lot of shame around food slash working out, etc. Like many others, all of that led me to Beachbody. I was first reached out to by a woman, we'll call her Sarah. Sarah was someone I knew from my small town and she was a bit older than me. She had kids and a husband and was fit, so I looked up to her in a way. So when she told me how amazing and inspiring I would be and how many lives I could change, I fell for it. 
it. Hook, line, and sinker. I was 22 at the time in 2014. So I forked over my $160 and signed up as a quote unquote discount code. That lasted all of three months when I finally realized that she was pushing me to become an active coach. And I did not want a cold message or orc the business. So I canceled, but continued with the workouts. But alas, I did not learn my lesson that first time. I proceeded to sign up as a coach under her several more times under the next four years. I can't remember the exact amount, but I do know that I was a revolving door coming in and out of her downline every few months. Every time there was a new program, I was like, hey girl message, that she knew she could win. A, because I'm a people pleaser, and B, because she knew how very desperate I was to change myself and my body. She even made sure to play into my insecurities, and when I expressed a feel failure, she told me that the only way I fail is if I give up. It generated so much extra shame in my brain, I didn't want to keep letting her down. So fast forward to 2018 and I've given in again, but this time with the intentions of, of really trying to work it. I'm taking pictures and posting, all the things that they tell you to do with the exception of cold messaging. I never wanted to cross that line. So I decided to go on one of the weekend events with her upline, my upline, and a couple of girls from the side of the arm. So like upline, upline, sideline. It was about a two hour drive from our town. So we get there, everything was great. This was the launch, oh, of the 2B mindset and the pre-workout. I hear a couple of speakers and then comes no fucking way. Then comes out, who I hadn't heard of at this point. I guess she does insanity. Anyways, I get a bad vibe from the get-go. She seems demeaning and the response to her was so cultish. So after she speaks, my nightmares came to life and we did a group workout. I've never done insanity before, but thought I'd obviously try it with everyone. I was in the very back of the massive ballroom and when I reached a point I needed to stop, I did. As soon many coaches tell you can take it at your own pace, right? But I kid you not this woman, D from the stage called me out in front of everyone for stopping. I can't remember exactly what she said, but I do remember wanting to absolutely mount into a puddle. So we leave and head home, and I think this car ride was when I finally realized how all-consuming that lifestyle can be. I was riding in the van with six of these women. The whole ride home, no one looked up from their phone, even my upline who was driving. She was messaging someone the whole time, was telling us that if she did not talk to this girl right now, it would be a no. It was literally like a fisherman with a giant catfish on the line. I felt uncomfortable about her texting and driving, but I didn't want to say anything to upset anyone. No one talked about anything other than who they had on the hook, how frustrated they were with some of the downlines who aren't working hard enough, and Instagram captions. Hearing them talk about what they say and do to get people to say yes just reminded me that I was nothing but one yes and 99 no's. I've since cut ties with Beachbody, though it took me another year to learn I needed to. I'm a sucker. I will never go back. But I wasn't done with MLMs yet. I've been a distributor for a jewelry MLM for about two years. I felt justified in this because I do love the company and their products. And there is not near as big of a push to recruit as some other companies. But I know that I cannot continue to support it, especially after everything I've learned from you and other anti-MLM channels. So I called it quits with that company about two months ago and I've never felt so free. In those two years, I found that I had already lost $2,500. That was my last straw. I've already shared with my mom who has already decided to leave her MLM too. We look forward to holding each other accountable and no longer shilling out our money to companies that are not designed for us to win. Sorry, this is so long. I even left things out. Thanks for listening. So the first thing I wanna to touch on is the safety hazard. Now with texting and driving, that's more of like a safety issue, like an actual like safety hazard and against the law to be texting and driving. I get if like you're touching to put your map on or whatever, like you're touching your phone because you're looking at the maps for directions or whatever because directions, but no, that's not okay. And I would say definitely like bring it up if you're with someone who's texting and driving just say hey can you pull over and talk to that person like we can all wait i'd rather not you know get into a car accident and one of us get really badly injured so that's what i recommend or you know not that you guys may just get injured but someone else can get really injured from someone being on the phone and driving if this person wanted to message this girl so badly she could have been like hey deanna can you message this person for me or hey can you respond and say this for me instead of like someone you know texting and driving that's just my opinion on texting and driving 
with the D that I talked about in here, I did say her name, but I think I'm gonna blur it out in editing. When she said a couple speakers for Beachbody came out and I, I'm just gonna say the person's letter because it starts with a D. Yeah, she is very big in Beachbody, like very, very big. Like she's the upline of some heavy hitters is what I would say. Like some people that are in Beachbody that are making like millions of dollars a year, she's their upline. So not only does she have a huge following on social media with good engagement, which shows me she probably has not bought in her followers or anything like that. It looks like raw engagement. Those are people that are joining her. I can only imagine after hundreds of thousands of people following this person on social media, how many people she has recruited. But on top of that, years back, she recruited someone who is in the top like 10 of Beachbody right now. And then that person recruited someone instantly that is now in the top 10. So that just goes to show that's only two people though out of thousands that have been recruited. But they all kind of start at the same time. When Dee joined Beachbody, she pretty soonly after that recruited that person and then the person under her that's like a millionaire recruited the other millionaire so the three of them are making that like high up upline so much money so i am so happy though that i could help this person like it makes me so happy when any of like my old videos can at all like help someone not join an mlm or if they join an mlm allow them to see like another side and it's always what i want to show i want to i'm going to give my opinion this is my channel always going to give my opinion about mlms but at the same time like showing facts and knowing that those facts are not normally shown when you're in the mlm it makes me happy when i'm able to showcase them on you know youtube that it can potentially help somebody who doesn't know to search for that information or doesn't have access to it. That's why I really love doing deep dives because I can get like so much information into one video. It's like a one-stop shop about that MLM. So I'm going to have the timestamps down below for you guys for when each story starts and stops. And right now I'm going to take a little bit of a break to talk about the sponsor of this video. And then I'll start the next story right after. So you guys know today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been working with them for, I would say, I think it's been like seven or eight months or something. It's been an an insane amount of time. I love them so much. So Skillshare is an online learning community with so many classes for creators and honestly just about every individual whether you're a creator or not. They have classes from photography to YouTube tips and even interior design which is something I most recently like have been looking at. So the class that I have been loving is Style Your Space Creative Tips and Techniques for Interior Designers by Emily Henderson. So a couple of things you can learn with this class that I've honestly been learning because not the best interior designer here. Normally I'm someone that's like really good with <laughs> coming up with a plan of like okay this is how I would like my room to look but I'm never good at like picking out individual pieces at the store and like being able to put that in the space if that makes sense so this video teaches you everything about what is your personal style how to identify it all the way to how to find pieces for your home that makes sense which is exactly what I need because again I always know like the vibe I want for my space but I never just know how to actually get it like how to buy one piece at this store one piece at that store and like piece everything together or one piece of furniture at one store and one at the other and how to make everything look very cohesive. So this is a great class for that. With that, Skillshare is a place that has no ads and they're always launching new classes to try out. So the first 1,000 people to use the link that's in my description will actually get a one month free trial of Skillshare if you wanna test it out. So let's get back into the horror stories. So this one says, not horror stories exactly, but red flags were seen and I listened to my intuition. I love that. It says, dear Deanna, my name is blank, but I'd like to be referred to as K please and thanks. What I'm about to tell you, I'm not sure if these are horror stories, but I'd like to tell you anyways. Story number one, I have been binge watching anti mlm videos and know what signs to look out for. I recently last week changed my IG to public. I am now a streamer on Twitch and another app, you now. Oh my God. I've never seen you now. I need to look that up. Less than half an hour of me doing this got a follow from this account with zero followers and that was following no one at all. I decided to investigate. So I looked at their IG and they mentioned in their bio, it said, join my team, ask me how, and their account mentioned a lot of the typical MLM or stuff. So I reported the account and blocked them. There's this new feature where you can block a person and any new, yes. 
and any new accounts they create, so I selected that. Had I not been the way I am and paid attention to the red flags, I probably would have been DM'd to ask about the opportunity. I'm so thankful for y'all in the anti-MLM community because before I had no idea what an MLM even was. By the way, Herbalife and Avon are actually quite popular in Jamaica where I live for some reason. Story number two, oh, I have not, I'm writing this down because I have not talked about this MLM and I have wanted to talk about it for so long and sometimes I just forget there's like so many MLMs and so many names. I'm writing this down because it's one that I need to talk about. So story number two, Total Life Changes Hun, which is Total Life Changes is an MLM. IG is a whole billboard for them. I synced my phone contacts and a contact came up as being an Instagram. I looked at their IG and they have zero posts but one follower. Lo and behold, the one person following them is a total life changes hun. I went and looked at this person's IG out of concern for my acquaintance who I had met at a seminar about intangible cultural heritage. When I say the hun's IG was a walking billboard, I am not kidding. All of her posts are about weight loss claims and financial claims and time freedom. I will provide screenshots but I report her account block her and any new account she may create and totally forgot to do so to show you. My acquaintance is a member of the disabled community. She is paraplegic and uses a wheelchair to move around and a bit overweight. She's the sweetest lady I know and the fact that a hun was going to try and recruit her makes me all kinds of furious. Thanks again for what you do educating the masses about the dangers of the MLM business model. So I'm so glad that you helped your friend out and it is true. Um, a lot of the times MLM reps can go to certain communities that struggle with certain things things, whether it be a community of individuals struggling with a mental health disorder or individuals who have a disability and really utilize that to prey upon vulnerable people. So I'm going to see if I can actually show you guys how to do this. I'm going to try and block my best friend on Instagram and see if it lets me show you guys how to do this. So when she said that she, she blocked someone on Instagram and then she was allowed to block any other account the person makes, it's a new feature on Instagram. So what you can do is, for example, if you block me and it's like, okay, Deanna, I'm going to block you. When someone blocks me, it will then ask, do you want to block any other account they may make? And that means if I try and, you know, follow you on my main account and then I go make a fake account really quickly, Instagram should now pick up on that and not allow me to find this other person's account, which can be very helpful for people who are really mean on the internet, if I'm being honest. There are a lot of people who will make like troll accounts on the internet. I've seen MLMers do it. If I'm being honest, my, or one of my friends actually went through that where she had accounts like made about her. They were like trying to dox her family, a bunch of crazy stuff. So what you can actually do is you can block that person and then you can block any other new account that they may make. So I think it comes in handy for especially those who are going through that where people are like doxing them and doing crazy things. So let's go. I'm going to test it out on <laughs> Isabella's page on her Instagram. So if I go to the three dots in the top right hand corner, I can click block. Ah, yes, and it's right here. It says block Isabella Lancer question mark. They won't be able to message you or find your profile posts or stories on Instagram. They won't be notified that you blocked them. And then it says block Isabella and new accounts they may create or can block just her. So clearly I'm not gonna block her. I'm glad that it was like a quick and easy thing. It didn't make me actually block her. But yeah, now you guys can do that. So if you didn't know and you're on Instagram and you're getting messages from people that you don't wanna get messages from, there you go. So let's move on to the next story. This one says, first date and destroyed friendship. Amway and Premier Designs. She goes, hi Deanna, I have two MLM horror stories for you. Both occurred during college, 2005 to 2009. Prior to attending college, I had never experienced an MLM. I'd never even heard that term or terms network marketing, direct marketing, etc. But my college years? Well, let's just say I was kicked in the face by MLM recruiters left and right. To set the scene, my university was in a small town that was home to five different colleges and universities. During the academic year, the population of the town increased, oh my gosh, by roughly 50,000 people. That meant jobs were hard to come by and easy to lose, so it was easy pickings for recruiters looking to take advantage of broke and desperate 18 year olds. These folks were, Google is always helping a girl out. These folks were brazen, which is bold and without shame is what the word means. I remember working as a cashier at the mall and being hounded almost every shift by MLM jerks. Once I was written up by my minimum wage job for spending too long on a customer at the register, he was literally buying a pair of socks just to get FaceTime with me. But of course, as an employee, I wasn't allowed to be rude. I told him not interested and no thanks about 10 times before he finally left. He didn't care 
that he was literally hurting me. All he cared about was signing up the next person so he could make money. This happened frequently, so bear in mind as you read these two stories. So okay, that was the backstory. So you're saying MLM reps would come up to you and then you would get reported by your jobs because they wouldn't leave you alone at the register? That just doesn't seem right to me, but I've never done retail, so they can do that? Like, even if your boss sees that you've literally said no, are you supposed to be rude? They always talk about, oh, people in customer service can't be rude to the customer because the customer's always right. The customer's not always right, one. But two, <laughs> then you get written up for it? That's so messed up. She goes, first story, my first date of college. Picture me, a naive 18-year-old girl who just spent two hours getting ready, wearing a new dress, and really looking forward to going on a date with this cute guy that had asked me out. Felt like a milestone to adulthood or something. We had met on campus a few times as he was the older brother of a girl in my dorm. We agreed to go to Applebee's for dinner and then see what was playing at the movies. He picked me up in my dorm and on our way to the restaurant, he pulled off into a church parking lot. I asked what he was doing and he told me he needed to stop in for a quick business meeting during a freaking date on a Friday evening in a church building. Honestly, I thought he was about to kill me or something and I felt stupid for getting into a car with a boy I barely knew. Cue my dad's overprotective voice in the back of my head. Anyways, as we got toward the back of the parking lot, I could see that there were other cars parked there and the lights were turned on in the fellowship hall. He told me I could come inside and wait for him for a few minutes. I was very annoyed, but it was really cold outside and I didn't want to be left in the car like a dog. So I went inside. Inside the fellowship hall, there was a little table with punch and snacks and people were standing around talking in little groups of two or three individuals. My date bolted for the other side of the room and talked to this oily 60 something year old man in a cheap suit. Then he came over to introduce us. The man immediately started grilling me about college. What was my major? How many classes was I taking? What was I planning on doing with my career? How much money had I paid for tuition? Had I used student loans? It was completely invasive and rude. Anytime I answered one of his questions, just trying to be polite, he would immediately shoot back with a judgmental response. Then he went in for the kill. Well, honey, there's one thing. You can go into $100,000 of student loan debt and spend the next four years taking classes you don't care about and struggling to find a part-time job. You can graduate and start working in a field that seems fine at first, but you'll get burnt out within the first five years of graduating. Or you can join Quickstar and make $10,000 a month. That's literally how I figured he would say it. I rolled my eyes, called my RA, and waited outside on the curb for her to pick me up. I could not believe someone tried to recruit me under the guise of a date. Disgusting. Quickstar changed their name to Amway. Okay, let's talk about story number one really quickly. Disgusting to take someone out on a date and then take them to a business meeting. You're horrible. Don't like you. Two, the whole thing about the student loan stuff. So yes, if someone decides to go to college, yes, they are going to spend probably a decent amount of money depending on what they're going for, what school they have to go to. Do they have to go to a university? Do they only have to do two years? Are they going to a trade school? Whatever it may be, they may have to spend a lot of money. But that doesn't mean that they're never gonna get anything after college or that they're not gonna be able to use that education to go somewhere in life that they wanna go or that that education is not going to help them. I think it depends on like the actual degree you get. So I think with certain degrees, it's like you may have a harder time getting into a field after college. So I always recommend just make sure to do your research on what it is that you wanna do, how the actual like field looks in your area, like wherever you're gonna be living. Is it like oversaturated? Are you gonna be able to find a job? Are you gonna have to move to another state, another city to be able to find a job? Because you know, there's a lot of people in your area that are doing it. Or are you in an area where there's like one job? Are you in a small little town? I know someone who was in a small town who was literally not able to get a job because there wasn't enough jobs in the town versus the amount of people that were there. So it's really important to try and look into all of that. Like clearly go to school if you wanna to go to school for something you're passionate for, but at the same time, do a little bit of research. You never know, you may have to move or something in order to find a position depending on how saturated it is in your area with you know jobs to person ratio. So that's what I would recommend doing. Like personally, I know I did a ton of research. I went to multiple advisors. I talked with my husband. It took me weeks to truly decide. I mean, God, I was always wanting to go for psychology, but it took me a long time to think and I did my research on what avenues I could take and there's so many and I looked at the areas I'd want to live one day and that's kind of like what made me choose. Okay, this is what I want to go for. It's a good like avenue for this, this, and this. I can choose whichever one, but whatever. So that's what I recommend. Anyways, that's all. Also, the fact that this creepy freaking date guy took you to this weird location. He's lucky you didn't like tase him or something because you thought you was about to get kidnapped. Next, 
The second story involves a jewelry company called Premier Designs. One of my friends got pregnant and married during college. Her husband was a little bit older than her and had a decent job. So even though she was still in school, they were able to buy a cute little house and have nice things on his income alone. When her daughter came along, she decided to drop out of college and become a stay-at-home mom. Someone from her church recruited her to start selling this jewelry. I decided to buy a necklace from her as a show of support for her business, quote unquote. It was like feeding a shark. The necklace was something cheap that would have probably cost $15 at Target, but she gave me this wholesale pitch about how it's really a really great quality and that it reflected in the $75 price tag. Then she told me that if I wanted to spend just a little bit more money, I could actually become a consultant and get a starter kit that would come with all kinds of beautiful jewelry that I could wear. It was not a little bit more money. It was $400 to sign up. Their jewelry was really pretty though and Christmas was coming up, so I thought I could get some items to give to my mom and grandma for Christmas and be done with it. The starter kit didn't include any cases or bags to put the jewelry in. It didn't include any jewelry displays, marketing kits, receipts, absolutely nothing except for like six pieces of jewelry. I didn't know that until after the kit arrived. If I wanted to actually sell any of the products, I would need to invest a further $150 at least, sign up for the boost at a craft show and flea market, and badger my friends to buy this crappy jewelry. It took no further, I cut my losses. P.S. I don't recommend if you're in an MLM to go to booths or craft shows because that's for actual people who own their own companies and make stuff from scratch or make stuff by hand. She then says, I took it no further, I cut my losses, but it doesn't stop there. My friend got upset with me because I wasn't actively selling, which meant she wasn't earning any money from me. We had been friends for about three years at this point and all of a sudden she was acting like she was my sales manager. She would tell me that her daughter was going to have to go without food. No way if I didn't sell anything that much. She was very manipulative about it. One day she sent me a text message asking if I had on one of her necklaces. I told her no, but she asked again a few days later. Again, I told her no. About a week after that, I posted a picture on Facebook that I took with my grandmother on Mother's Day. I was wearing one of the necklaces that came in the $400 starter kit. This person actually had the gall to write a public comment on the picture of my grandmother and me accusing me of stealing the necklace from her. I took it off and never spoke to her again. Rude. The whole, oh, if you don't buy my products, my daughter's gonna go without food. Well, way to guilt trip people and manipulate people based off their feelings and how they feel about you. Yeah, that's a great way to sell. Such an ethical company. And then to say like publicly, you stole my necklace when she knows that you had to get a starter kit and that those are the necklaces that come in the starter kit. She's ridiculous. <laughs> I would probably be like, what the heck? I probably would have just blocked the person. I'm not someone to sit and like argue in comments. I'm not gonna sit and argue in my Instagram or my Facebook or even my YouTube comments. We can debate, we can have a difference of opinions. I can respond with why I don't agree or I do agree and you can do the same with me. But once you start attacking or making accusations, we're done. Conversation over. But thank you so much for sharing that. I don't know if I've really heard of Premier Designs. Is that an MLM that's like actually active anymore? Because the only MLM that I know of with jewelry is like paparazzi, but then you have Origami Owl that sells those things. Yes, they still sell. Are they closing? People asked on Google, it's like, is Premier Designs closing in stores? And someone said, unfortunately, yes, on December 31st. Well, let me go to the actual Premier Jewelry website and see if they still sell. So let's go to shop. Oh, okay. Um, what happened? It's Premier Designs closing at stores. It says, unfortunately, yes, on December 31st, 2020. Here's a bit of information from Tim Horner. Since 1985, Premier Designs has honored its founding purpose by serving others and enriching lives. My parents, Andy and Joan Horner, founded this company with people as their most important asset. Their deep Christian faith demanded of them honesty and integrity in all of their decisions. They truly built a company that honored God and served. It says, during these past few years, there have been many changes in the business world. We have worked harder to adjust to those disruptions. We have tried many things in recent years, but nothing has allowed us to regain momentum and growth. As a result, we are unable to continue business as usual beyond December 31st, 2020. This is a most difficult decision. It makes us very sad, but it is obvious that now is the time. Even as difficult as this is, we have nothing but thankfulness to God for all he has done through Premier slash DVTD. So many of you have served and worked for years in Premier. You have done your part to make Premier a blessing to 
to thousands of others. The events and retreats and trips were all the result of your caring work. The Premier family is truly one of a kind. The charities and missions, giving blah, 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 120 million was not possible without you. You'll be forever grateful. I hope your life has touched and enriched mine as much as mine, whatever. We were also excited about DVTD and its potential to expand our reach and mission. Fortunately, while the excitement has been shared by so many of you, the results have fallen way short of what is required for us to sustain as a business moving forward. The links in this email provide about what this means for you, your team of affiliates, and your customers. While it is normal to feel sad about your decision in the moment, we must not lose sight of what God has done through this company since 1985. It is truly remarkable and its impact will live on through eternity. The Lord put Premier in the hearts of my parents, but he accomplished a mission and purpose through all of you. To God be the glory. Okay, so they closed down. Something that's insanity is the sentence that says, the links in this email provide details about what this means for you, your team of affiliates, and your customers. Meaning, all of the MLM reps that were in this MLM just got an email one day with a link letting them know, yeah, we're shutting down. Like, I don't know what else I have to say to try and tell people your MLM is not your business. Like, if someone can just shut your shit down just because it's not your own business. Now, clearly there's people like the FTC can give warning letters. You can get sued by your state if you're doing illegal things. I'm not talking about that because that can happen. But this, where your MLM says, we can no longer do this. And then out of the blue, you're just fired. Like, I'm not trying to laugh. I'm just like being honest. Cause that's what it is. In your MLM, you have no say if something is going to shut down or not. And that's scary. Like when you're in the MLM, you only know what the MLM CEOs and corporate want to tell you, right? So when you do get high up in the MLM, you do get access to the CEO and to corporate a lot more. When I hit one star diamond, I did have a suit, like a specific corporate lady who would deal with me. So if I had questions or I needed to get on a call to get advice about Beachbody or about the business, I would let her know and we would hop on a call together. So she was someone in corporate that got paid an hourly wage or a salary from Beachbody and she would like help me with things. So depending on your rank, you can get that and you can get someone to actually work with you. So that's like as close to getting information as you get is being able to talk to your corporate person. But besides that, this is not gonna be something that you know about. This is gonna come out of the blue. When this company probably knew for however long, however many months, however many years that they weren't keeping up with the, they weren't keeping up with like income and stuff. They weren't bringing in what the company needed to bring in to keep rolling. And then people just get left to, hey, the links to this email provide detail about what this means for you and your team. What it means is you don't have a business anymore because the CEO shut it down. Enough said. Anyways, thank you so much for the person who sent me this story. That is going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I had really fun doing this one. So don't forget to leave a like and a comment. I would love to chat with you guys in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in Monday's video. I think it's about Origami Owl. Yes, I think. Deep dive, Origami Owl, coming at ya.